Lockout tagout standard. This is Manti County recommended operating guideline number 45, which was adopted in October of 2010. We are going to cover the scope of the lockout tagout procedure as well as the scope of the operating guideline as well as the procedure and how to perform a lockout tagout. Okay, first, let's talk about lockout. What does it mean? Lockout is a technique used to prevent the release of hazardous energy or to prevent the hazardous energy from escaping. And how this is done is by using a device. In this case, they're depicting a padlock is placed on the appropriate energy isolating device that is in the off position or closed the position. The purpose of the padlock is, is to prevent someone from uh, inadvertently opening a device and activating the energy device while you're either working on the machinery or, in our case, uh, we have an emergency going on and we have to disconnect the power for some reason. We don't want someone to come up and reactivate the energy source, thereby injuring someone or further injuring someone or putting rescuers in jeopardy. The scope of Manti County ROG 45. The ROG should be used whenever there are personnel working in or around energized electrical sources or any type of stored energy, such as electrical, air pressure, water pressure, spring pressure, hydraulics, or other potential energy sources. This guideline covers the service, maintenance, and energy emergency response to any machinery or equipment in which unexpected energizing or startup could cause injury or further injury to a patient or to themselves as rescuers. At no time shall personnel service remove or perform maintenance or work in an emergency situation on any equipment or machinery until the stored energy source has been bled down, dissipated, turned off, and or blocked, and the machinery has been uh, locked and or tagged out. Lockout and tagout is required for all personnel who may have to operate at an emergency scene if any procedure could involve either patient or rescuer exposure to live electrical parts or exposure to a stored energy source or any machinery or equipment. Step one in the procedure. Whenever a situation is encountered that meets the above qualifications upon arrival at the scene, personnel shall check to see if building, plant personnel, or company personnel have begun the lockout tagout procedure. If they have begun the procedure, add your company lock and or tag to ones already present. If lockout tagout procedures have not been initiated, personnel will initiate this guideline, notify all affected personnel that lockout tagout procedure is required and the reason why, with the assistance of the building, plant, and equipment personnel, shut down the equipment using normal shutdown procedures if you can assure the person who is entangled won't be hurt further. Step three in the procedure, operate the disconnect switch, valve, circuit breaker, or other isolating device so that the equipment is isolated from its energy source. Toggle switches, push buttons, and other types of control switches are not isolating devices. Dissipate and isolate all stored energy, such as that found in springs, elevated machine members, rotating parts, hydraulic systems, and air, gas, steam, and, or water pressure. All stored energy must be dissipated or restrained by methods such as repositioning, blocking, bleeding down, etc. Lock out the energy isolation device with approved energy lockout device, individual company lock and or tags. If more than one company is working at the same incident, each company shall put their individual lock and or tag on the energy lockout device. Step six, if it is impossible to use a lock, another positive means of disconnecting the circuit or equipment must be used. Other positive means may include unplugging, disconnecting the conductors, or removing a fuse. A tag must be placed on the plug conductors, fuses, breakers, etc. If no positive means can be used, placing a radio-equipped firefighter at the controls to keep the machine e equipment from being activated shall be used. Check for zero energy, and that can be done by using a hot stick, looking at the electric meter, and then start up then a startup of the equipment to ensure the equipment is at zero energy if possible. Rescue personnel's safety must come first before rescue can start. Only after the machine equipment has been properly locked, tagged out, shall emergency personnel begin to, to remove the entangled trap patient. Always try and have a representative of the company where the incident is located to assist you with their expertise on the equipment. 
Number nine and ten. The key to the lockout tagout device shall remain with the incident commander once the lock has been applied. Should an investigation by the fire department or any other agency be required, our lockout tagout equipment shall be photographed and left in place until the investigation is complete and or a chief officer or senior officer authorizes its removal. The incident commander shall notify the communications center that lockout tagout is in place and what the disposition of the lockout tagout will be. The, five, the fatal five main causes of lockout tagout injuries, failure to stop equipment, failure to disconnect from the power source, failure to dissipate or bleed and neutralize residual energy, accidental restarting of equipment, and failure to clear work areas before restarting. Hazardous energy sources found in the workplace. Typically, in the, these are the typical hazardous energy sources that can be found anywhere. At electrical, you have generated and static electric, electrical. In mechanical, is transitional, rotational. Thermal would be machines or equipment and chemical reactions. Potential would be pressure, hydraulic pressure, pneumatic pressure, vacuum pressure, springs, and gravity. Types of devices, plug locks, valve valve, ball valve lockout, gate valve lockout, group lockout hasp, electrical, hydraulic, pneumatic, and other pressurized systems. Lockout procedure, this is a summary. Alert the building plant equipment personnel that power is being disconnected. Prepare for the shutdown. Shut the equipment down. Isolate the equipment that's being shut down. Application of lockout devices. Control of in stored energy. Equipment isolation. Verification. Any questions about the lockout tagout procedure, please ask your company officer. Thanks.